Well, good morning, everybody. I'm glad to be with you this morning uh, through the technology. Uh, I hope that you are well, both safe physically and spiritually on this Palm Sunday. Um, hear these words of encouragement from the psalmist. Psalms 18, the first two verses. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom will I trust? My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Well, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. This is Palm Sunday to 2020. Uh, very different type of circumstance. Uh, I only have a couple of announcements and we'll get to uh, the service. Um, there will be some kind of Good Friday service. It will be on the conference call. It won't be a live stream. Uh, I will let you know details of that as I figure it out. And also, uh, one of our own, uh, Nikki St. Clair, has made a music video, and uh, there's a link to it on our Facebook page. And if you don't have Facebook, if you would just uh, type in YouTube, Nicole Ann, A-N-N, -N, music, and it'll come up. And she did a really good job, really proud of Nicole for doing that. So, uh, just a couple of prayer requests this morning. We should be in prayer. Uh, I did have two special prayer requests that I'd like to share with you. Uh, Connor Chukalochek, he has had a high fever for some time and he needed to be taken to Children's. Uh, so he was there and uh, they released him because they don't want anybody that's not critical in the hospital down in Pittsburgh. But he has to have a follow-up on Monday. But would you keep uh, Connor in your prayers? And then Emma Grace uh, Cedarwall, uh, she is that, that baby, that three three month year old um, that we've been praying for. She is in Pittsburgh. Uh, she's facing her third abdominal surgery for the blockage in her bowel. And uh, she is still in the Nick Hume first birth. And of course, we're going to pray uh, for everything that's going on and for everybody. So would you join me in a moment of prayer as we quiet our hearts this morning? Dear Heavenly Father, we just uh, lift up each and every one of us this morning. I know that it would be very nice if we could be all gathered in your house today, but thank you that there is the technology and, uh, that we can do what we can to spread the gospel. And I, I thank you for um, these, these wonderful people that I have, uh, Katie and Lucas and Justin, that have much more expertise in what uh, this is. And I wouldn't be able to do this without them. And I just thank you for all the churches that are finding different ways to bring the gospel into people's homes. And we pray for uh, our leadership. Um, as they've had to make hard decisions too. And Father, we just pray that they would be um, mindful of the people's um, needs and of the wisdom of God when they make those decisions. And we, we lift them up to you. We pray for all the, uh, the people that are on the front line this morning, the people that are in the medical field, the first responders, police, uh, everybody that's making a difference in some other way. We pray for uh, the people that are uh, going out of their way to make sure that everybody has something to eat and uh, putting out food in every way. Uh, we pray for all of them. We pray for those that have uh, lost employment during this time, lost an income, and they're uh, searching for different ways of small business owners and, and those and we pray for those that have, uh, have this virus. And our president tells us that these next couple of weeks are going to be very, very hard weeks. And we're going to see a rise in the death count. And um, we just pray for that. I did read an article in one of the uh, 
papers this week where the person that wrote that article kind of made jest about us praying for this virus. And, uh, and I pray for those that think that God doesn't have anything to do with anything. And he's not a personal God. And I pray for those that are separated from their family and their friends at this time. And their life's been totally interrupted. And for all of us that just don't have that, doesn't, has that fear inside of them that the future is just totally unknown. And we pray for the church too. For years and years and years, we've said that uh, the church should be taking the gospel out of the doors of the church. And really, I'll tell you, we're doing that now. And so we just ask in, in this time that there would be people that were going to be reached that have never been reached before. And we pray for this word this morning. Um, it would be a word of encouragement on this Palm Sunday. But more than anything else, Father, those of us believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is the answer for everything as we enter into Holy Week this week. The week that is most holy in all the Christian calendar. When Jesus Christ went to the cross and paid the sacrifice for sin. But it didn't stop there. So the next time we meet on Easter morning, we'll be rejoicing in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Father, as we begin to prepare our hearts this morning, could it be with that prayer that you taught your disciples? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, it's a pleasure to be able to be with you today and uh, bring the word in a special way. I hope that uh, we're doing a little bit better at this time. Last week, you know, we were crazy before this happened. It was two till ten till we got everything working out, but everything seems to be pretty smooth today. So if I don't flub up everything, everything ought to be pretty good. Uh, today is Palm Sunday, and so we're going to use uh, the Gospel of Mark uh, for Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. I titled this uh, Sermon, Momentary Bliss, and it comes out of the 11th chapter of Mark, the first 10 verses. So let's not forget who we are, and... Uh, my dear friend Katie has set this up, so I'm standing today, so I feel a little bit more comfortable. And uh, so let's stand wherever you're at when you're hearing this today. And we look to the uh, 11th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, and we'll be reading the first uh, 10 verses. Mark chapter 11, the first 10 verses. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem, unto Bethany, and unto Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sent forth two of his disciples. And he said unto them, Go your way into the village, and over against you, and as soon as you be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied, whereupon never man sat. Loose him, and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way, and they found the colt tied by the door without in a place where there were two ways met, and they loosed him. And certain of them that stood there said unto him, What do ye, loosening the colt? And they said unto them, Even as Jesus had commanded, and they let him go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off trees, and they strawed them in the way. And they that went before, and they that followed, cried, saying, 
Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let's pray this morning. Father, we just ask today that you would take and rightly divide your word among us. We're asking for a special dispensation of your grace this morning that you are able to uh, go beyond the walls of this church into people's homes. I pray that you have prepared people to be listening and hungry to hear the gospel in an encouraging word. And I pray as I pray for all those folks, I just pray for myself. Um, it's still very uncomfortable preaching like this. And I really mean it. So take out of me those things that are in me that want to rebel against you. And fill that void with your Holy Spirit. So that nothing would be said in these few moments that would be uh, out of context with the Word of God. And that uh, it would be true, and it would be holy. And in that trueness, in that holiness, Satan would have no place in any of our homes, in our families. And that no one would be hurt by a word that isn't correct. And so we ask all these things in the name of of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So if you're standing at home, sit down. Have you ever had a day that was just perfect, where everything just seemed to go exactly perfect? You went to bed that night and it's just, you laid your head down and you almost had to giggle. I've had a couple of those days. But I'll tell you, it's been my experience <laughs> that those perfect or seeming perfect days, they're awful short-lived. It always seems to me that there's just trouble just right around the corner. And that reminds me of one of the great truths of the Bible, something we've said here in church many times, that Jesus has told us that the devil only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So today is Palm Sunday. It's the day when Jesus entered into Jerusalem. And I would imagine on that day 2,000 and some years ago that it seemed like one of those perfect days. But the devil was there just around the corner doing what he does best. So in this time of uncertainty, and I know this is a time of that, it's so easy to be concerned about what might happen in the future that we fail to enjoy the blessings of the moment we have at hand. So let's talk about this scripture just a little bit, this scripture from Mark. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem is recorded in all four Gospels. Each one of those Gospels adds some details onto um, that great day. Mark, probably uh, the first gospel that was wrote, uh, chooses to center in these 10 verses that we've read together his account on the perfection of that day and not the trouble that's going to come in the future. So how about this, guys? How about we just ignore the fears of what might happen in the future for just these few moments together and enjoy the blessings that we have now. I can only imagine it was one of those days going into Jerusalem where everything just clicked. The donkey was right where he should be. The entry was perfect. The people were there. The praises were heard. All the fulfilled prophecies that happened on that day was just one of those days. And I know that today is a very, very special day in the life of Mount Olive. Palm Sundays, wow, it's a day of celebration here. We take in new members. We baptize folks. We share the sacrament of communion. 
And after we've heard the word, uh, we break bread together downstairs in a time of fellowship. And it's just a great day. It's a tradition. It's been a tradition since I've been here, and, and maybe it's been that way from before. And now, as I look out over empty pews this morning, it seems like the words of Jesus is just as true as it could be. And that tradition has been stolen. But I want you to be really honest with me this morning. In the midst of all this craziness that's going on, we are blessed. Please keep that in the top of your head. We are a blessed people. Today's all about Jesus. It's not only about his entrance into Jerusalem, but it's about Jesus' entrance into our hearts. So I have three things I'd like to talk to you about this morning uh, that, you know, is easy to skip over in the story of, of the entry into Jerusalem. And the first one, uh, I just say it was the donkey. Uh, when I told my wife Sherry about, you know, my first point was the donkey, she said, what in the world does the donkey have to do with anything? I admit it's pretty easy to just uh, blow off the donkey in the midst of the telling of this story. But there's more to that donkey than meets the eye. He, and we know it's a he because uh, he's called a colt, and a colt is a he. And anybody that's the worst person, you know that. That donkey is right where Jesus said that he would be. And that donkey is a uh, donkey that's never been rode by anybody. And this really amazes me. With just the mention of Jesus' name, the, uh, the folks that are taking care of that donkey just let him go to the two perfectly strangers. I just, that amazes me. The donkey's not broke. But yet, he allows Jesus to ride him into a yelling crowd with people throwing their clothes and their branches of trees on him, at his feet, and he just rides through that like a show horse. I wonder if you've ever felt like the donkey. You know? You know what I mean? Never felt like you're just there. You're not quite as important as somebody else. You're not quite as good as the rest. 500 years before Jesus rode that donkey into Jerusalem, there was a prophet named Zacharias that said the king of kings was going to come into that city riding on a donkey. Hmm. That donkey was important to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, my friends, if you really believe the Bible this morning, you are created in the image of God. You're one of a kind. You were created with a divine purpose. You are a whole lot more than just some run of the mill donkey. Could it be? Could it be this morning that in this time of crisis, it is your time to shine? You know, uh, hey, we got folks making face masks. We got folks feeding kids. We got folks sending cards. We got folks giving telephone calls. We got folks doing things that they never did before, but finding their own niche how to get things done. And I tell you, maybe it is your time to shine just like it was the donkey's time. Remember this donkey out of all the beasts in the world at that day was chosen before his birth to carry the king of kings into the most holy week ever. God gave himself so that you would not be just some plain old the second is the palms. Mark tells us that the people scattered their clothes, their garments, and they caught branches, uh, 
palm branches off trees and they threw them in front of Jesus as a kind of a red carpet type of entrance. You add an S to palms and you end up with Psalms, the Jewish prayer book and Psalm book, and pretty much ours too. And Jesus don't miss a detail, just does not miss a detail. Before he created the tree, he had a purpose for the tree. You know, on Palm Sunday, we usually pass palms out. And everybody waves them, and, you know. Now, I've been told that we have some young people who are taking those palms that we can't hand out this morning, obviously, and they're making them into crosses. So when this is all over and done with, and we get to gather again, we're going to hand out those palm crosses. I'm going to ask you to do something, even before you get one of those crosses. Put them somewhere where everybody sees them in your house. And when your children's children's children ask you, what does that cross mean? What does that palm cross mean? You can tell them how Jesus Christ got you through this pandemic that we're in here and how the cross of Christ got you through life and how the cross of Christ is going to see you even through death. Before he created anything, he designed a purpose for you. Sometimes I need my routine upset for me to see what's really important. Maybe that's the way it is for you too. You know, if I'm honest with you, sometimes I just get too full of myself. Thinking it's you know, all about me. But just become, I guess, just a little too independent and not near as reliant on Jesus Christ as I should be. But can I tell you today, folks, in Palm Sunday 2020, I really get it. I really get it. What a humbling experience this is. I really get it that I need other people. I really get that I'm not near as important as I want to think I am. Just, just doing these sermons like this, if I wouldn't have these folks that are able to do this, it's way out of my wheel horse. But more than even that, I get that I need Jesus and I need him really bad. When everything's just crazy, I need a rock to stand on. And Jesus Christ is that rock. I pray that he's that rock for you too. My last point to you this morning is the Hosanna. Now I looked up Hosanna in uh, Webster's Dictionary. I like to consult Mr. Webster on things like this. Here's what Mr. Webster says that Hosanna means. A cry of praise to God, an exclamation of adoration. And there it was. There was Jesus. There was all this fulfilled prophecy. There was Jerusalem. There was the people. And there was the Hosanna. The people saying of Jesus who Jesus is. Let me read verse 9 and 10 to you again. And they went before and they followed cried saying Hosanna. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Maybe if you're truly real and honest with me today, you've blown Jesus off a little bit and not truly given him the Hosannas that he deserves. Biblically, in the week that follows, 
Satan will do his best to discredit who Jesus really is. But even his best efforts not only prove that Jesus is who the Bible says he is, but the cross that was to be Satan's trump card. Jesus took that cross and made it into our way of salvation. That is a Hosanna. I believe there's a parallel here. I believe that Jesus entered into Jerusalem knowing full well what laid ahead. I want to read to you a verse out of the book of Revelation, the 13th chapter and the 8th verse. Revelation 13, 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. And that's a small h. We're not talking about Jesus. Uh, the context of this is the Antichrist. And it says that all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. And here comes the catch. Whose names are not written in the book of life of Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. <clears throat> There's a lot of important truths in that verse. Before there was anything, that verse says, before there was created, before the world, before anything, before anything that was created, Jesus planned the cross. That we, he would give himself as a sacrifice for sin, for you. Without Jesus, that verse tells us that there is no hope in withstanding the devil. My friends, that would tell me how much you need Jesus Christ. Just as Jesus came into Jerusalem over 2,000 years ago. He can come into your heart. Now, I, you know, I, I can't really explain how that all works to you because you have to experience that yourself. I can't experience for you. Your mother, your father, your grandmother, your grandfather, your pastor cannot do that for you. You know, when Jesus says in, in Revelation about your name being wrote in the Lamb's Book of Life. I understand that to mean that when you ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior and come into your heart, that your name is wrote in his book. And all this other stuff about the Antichrist and, you know, death, dying, hell, that don't mean anything anymore because Jesus Christ paid the price for your sin. And now you have an everlasting hope in life through him. Now, it's as simple as this. You just need to be honest with yourself and realize what sin has done to you. Let me, let me just say that again and let that sink into you. You just need to be really honest with yourself and see what sin has done to you and the consequences thereof. And once you realize that, all you have to ask is Jesus. I need your help. Forgive me come into my heart today. Come in and just clean me up because I can't do it myself. And that's all there is to it. Today, today, you can have Palm Sunday in your heart right now. Jesus Christ can come into your heart right now. Will you pray?
pray with you. Father, as we come to a close this morning, if there would be anybody out there this morning that needs to know what Palm Sunday really is, of Jesus Christ coming into their heart, I pray that they would just pray that prayer that they realize what sin is and what it does and how it's affected them. And they would ask Jesus Christ, just come into my heart, Jesus. I know I need you, and I don't know any other way. So please come into my heart. And Father, we just thank you for the word today. But more than anything else, we thank you that you chose before the foundations of the world were ever created that there would be a cure for sin. And you are that cure. And we thank you and we praise you. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I just thank you this morning uh, for giving us the privilege of your time in a very crazy time. I pray this has, the Holy Spirit has ministered to you, not by what I've said, but by the power of the Holy Ghost. And I pray if you've made that decision for Christ today, that you would tell somebody, your pastor, if you're not part of this church or somebody else, and know that Jesus Christ died for you too. So, may the Lord be with me and thee, while we are absent, one from another, till we meet again. Amen. Amen. Uh, just one other announcement. Uh, just remember that the Easter service will be on Facebook Live. We had planned to do it at the, the Bar and Drive-In. Uh, however, with the stay-at-home orders, we've had to cancel that. So it will be here on Facebook Live at 10 a.m. Um, and uh, there will be, you can, you can check it out later on YouTube. And there's going to be CDs out in the, in the birdhouse out there. So thank you and God bless you. Stay safe.